Good morning, church. Are you excited to be found in the house of the Lord on the last day of the year? Are you excited? Yes, yes huh? then let's show it. Okay, come. Let's do a simple three-step exercise. Can I ask all of you to stand up? Just a simple three-step exercise, okay? Everybody stand up. Okay, step one, very simple. Everybody take a deep breath. Step two, everybody raise your hands and hold for 15 seconds. Wow, fantastic. Okay, step three, at the count of three, say together with me out loud, huh? praise God, okay? One, two, three, praise God. Let's give God a clap of praise. Please be seated. So in case you think that praising God with lifted hands is very difficult, that's how you do it. Just three steps, okay? Let's go to God in prayer. Father, we thank you that we can be found in your house on this last day of the year, praising you, thanking you, listening to your word. We ask, O oh God, that you tune us. Holy Spirit, tune our ears, tune our hearts to you, incline our hearts to the Father, and help us to receive, Lord, your love, and to respond with gratitude and thanksgiving in our hearts. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. So, the psalm that we read just now, Psalm 145, is a very interesting psalm. Actually, the whole book of Psalms is also very interesting. If you want to learn how to praise God, read the book of Psalms. There are, about, there are 150 psalms divided into five sections, and each section ends with a doxology of praise. Okay, okay? so that's Psalms. So Psalms 145 is interesting because it is the last psalm of praise attributed to King David. And it is also very interesting because it is the last of nine psalms that has a very special structure in that every verse of that psalm starts with a letter of the Hebrew alphabet. And there are 22 letters in the Hebrew alphabet. You don't believe, you go and check it out. Okay, the other eight psalms are 9, 10, 25, 34, 37, 111, 112, and 119. If you didn't catch it, I'm not going to repeat it because we are not playing bingo, right? But you can watch the video and review it, yeah? Or you can Google. So Psalm 145, as you read just now, is very interesting. It tells us a few things. Number one, it tells us the characteristics of God's deeds. In verse 4, it talks about God's mighty acts. Verse 5, wondrous deeds. So the characteristic of God's deeds. Mighty acts, wondrous deeds. Okay? And then it also tells us about God's character. In verse 8, you talk about, just now we read, God is compassionate, slow to anger, rich in love. Right? And then he also tells us, Psalm 145 also tells us what we should do. You look at, you look at the verses uh, 5, 6, 7, you will talk about we should speak of his works, we should tell of his works, we should proclaim his deeds, and so on. So we are to proclaim his deeds, give thanks, so that people will know that the Lord is God Almighty. Okay, so let's move on from there. And that's the reason why we want to praise God. So we praise God to show gratitude. And the word gratitude simply means a state of thankfulness. Just now we sang the song, I will give thanks to you among the people, among the nations. Being thankful, being grateful, that's the meaning of gratitude. And in fact, gratitude, uh, for one of the very famous Roman philosophers, Cicero or Cicero, he says that gratitude is not only the greatest of virtues, but the parent of all the others. And this is a very famous philosopher. His works are well read even into the 19th century. So gratitude is the mother of all virtues. No wonder the Bible tells us that we should always rejoice in Thessalonians. We should always rejoice, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Because gratitude is a very powerful emotion. Even simply giving compliments to people, tell people thank you, and receiving compliments from people, being humble and being modest to accept the, the compliments that people give you can bring about joy from inside. It is just that simple. A very powerful emotion. So what happens when we show gratitude? Do you know that God has created a joy generator in every one of us? Do you know where's the joy generator? You want to make a guess, anybody? 
Come, come, try. Where do you think, <coughs> where do you think the joy generator is in your body? Come, young people, more knowledgeable one, come. This group, this group. Stomach. Stomach. <laughs> Good guess. Another answer, yes. Where? Heart. One more answer at the back. Rebecca, is it? What do you say? Heart also. Stomach, heart, and heart. Huh? Okay. Uh, close, uh, not so far away, <clears throat> because your body is not that big, right? Yeah? It is the brain. The brain, the brain. You see, our brain is made up of uh, a neural network, right? It's like a network of interconnected light bulbs that light up when the current or signal passes through it. That's why you hear the term neural network. Okay, that's why you have neurosurgeons, neuroscientists, and so on. So our brain is made up of a neural network. And our brain is conditioned to function in a repeated way. So, if you keep thinking of negative things, you are subconsciously wiring your brain to only process negative information. Conversely, if you think of positive things, you are wiring your brain to subconsciously process positive things. Interesting, right? We are not talking about faking the feeling. Huh? We are just talking about selectively choosing what is positive and focusing on it. Right? And in fact, when we show gratitude, research over the last 20 years especially has accelerated regarding how gratitude impacts our body, our mental health, and so on. And it has proven beyond doubt that the benefits of practicing gratitude are these. It improves, it reduces your stress, it improves your SIM, that's my own acronym, sleep, immunity, and your mood. Sleep immunity and your mood. It actually increases these things in our lives and improves the overall mental health. So in fact, they did an experiment. Uh, they, they asked one group of people for three weeks, huh, every day for three weeks, write a letter of gratitude. You may or may not send it to someone, but just write something. Write a letter, of, a note or letter of gratitude every day for three weeks. Something positive, right? The second group, they ask them every day for three weeks, write something negative, something that irritates you, something that angers you. And the third group was neutral. At the end of three weeks, they found that the first group that were writing positive things every day, they showed better scores in their mental health. Their sleep improved and so on. And what's interesting, what's interesting is that four months later, when they check on the group again, the first group still registered the same scores or even better. So this suggested that the impact of gratitude on us uh, is not only lasting, but it also increases over time. Isn't that wonderful? Okay. So how does it happen? I'm not a scientist, so I'm like you, I'm a Googler. Yeah? Uh, I read about it. Basically, our brain works in this way. When we practice gratitude, something that makes somebody says thank you to you or you show appreciation to somebody, our brain releases two chemicals called serotonin, I hope I pronounced it correctly, serotonin and dopamine. And these two chemicals are responsible for our emotions. And these two, I like to call it the happy chemicals. When these two happy chemicals are released, they are like neurotransmitters. Remember, the brain is a neural network. It transmits information and tells everybody, hey, let's be happy. And that's why you become happy, and that's why it releases you from toxic emotions. Okay? So that's why God has given us a joy generator in our brain. And research has shown that the regions of our brain, when we practice gratitude, those regions in our brain that affects and supports social interaction and interpersonal relationships actually increases. That's how God has made us. So, if you want joy, don't look around. Start being thankful. Start showing gratitude, not only to God, but also to the people around you. Start saying thank you. Yeah? And that goes two ways. You know, when you say thank you to somebody, the other person who receives your compliment and your thanks also feels good. So I'm glad that in our church we have started a, a little initiative where we, are, we, where we encourage you to write cards 
Encourage somebody, say, say thanks to somebody, give compliments to somebody, encourage them. Pick a card, write it. It makes you happy. It also makes the receiver happy. Amen? Yeah? So that's what happens when we show gratitude. So, so let's start praising God from now on. God says, I am the Lord. That is my name. I will not yield. That means I will not surrender. I will not give away. I will not yield my glory to another or my praise to idols. God says, I will not surrender my glory to another. If you want to praise, you praise God. If you want to give thanks, you give thanks to God, not to idols. That's how the language, that's how strong God's language is. My glory, I will not, I will not yield to another. Let's remember that, okay? So of course, in our mind, and that's a picture of the brain, uh, we praise God not only when things are going well, but we also praise God in troubled times, right? And sometimes, and I know that in life, when we're in troubled times, these are some things that can choke our praise channels. Pride, anxiety, worry, even sin. These things can choke our, our, our praise channels. I leave, I leave you to explore the scriptures in green there. Uh, those are meant for you to, some homework for you. Huh? If you want to know how to unchoke your praise channels, go read those scriptures. Okay? So there's some homework for you. So, the best example of a prophet in the Old Testament who has this attitude of gratitude is Habakkuk. You see, our gratitude does not depend on what we see and what we feel around us. Our gratitude depends on who God is. That's enough, who God is. He will put all things right. He punishes the wicked. He, he uplifts the humble. He hates the proud. And he will meet out justice. That's our God, and that's enough, right? So the scripture says in Habakkuk, Though the fig tree does not bud, and there are no grapes on the vines, though the olive crop fails, and the fields produce no food, though there are no sheep in the pen, and no cattle in the stalls, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God my Savior. What a powerful attitude towards God. Even when everything is zero, no sheep, no cattle, no food, no olive, nothing. Imagine in our context today, no house, no food, no television, no internet, nothing. Will you still say, yet I will rejoice in the Lord. I will be joyful in God, my Savior. I pray to God that we will all adopt this attitude. Our gratitude does not depend on things around us or how we feel about other people. Our gratitude rests on who God is, amen? Yeah, so let's swap all our pride and anxiety and, 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 and worries and sin for gratitude. So let the testimonies roll. I will, I will let Reverend Anthony take over from here and I believe that many people are waiting to give testimonies to God. So give praise to God, okay? And give glory to his name, amen. <laughs>